Steamroll is a steampunk adventure puzzle game that has hints of mini golf tactics in it. The game has been developed and published by Antikato and has been on Steam since the 19th of February. It's currently priced at £9.99p or $14.21. The game employs many different playstyles that keeps the player coming back for more. You play as the nameless junior engineer that is starting his new job in the mines. Inside these mines, people navigate using steam powered balls called cerebuses. These balls have a seat inside them where the engineer can sit and use the gyroscope like feature to make sure they don't end up upside down. Whilst learning the ins and outs of your new cerebus, you set off an explosion which causes the mines that you currently reside in to start crumbling to pieces. However, before you begin your escape, you hear voice over the radios placed around the mines. There are more people alive in the mines. You simply can't leave them. Now, you have a new mission. Using your new Cerebus and your knowledge, however little much you have, you must venture further down into the mines in order to save the two people you can hear and get out before the mines come down upon you. As like many games that have converting vehicles or games where you can run around on foot and then get into vehicles, there are two separate control schemes for Steamroll. Although there's no physical on foot movement, the Cerebus in rolling mode is essentially the on foot section of the game. The controls here consist of using the spacebar to release some steam to power your ball forward and using the arrow keys or A and D to turn left and right. However, the player can also use the mouse to direct the ball, there's no need for clicking. During the shooting parts of the game, the control scheme changes. Once in a dock, the player's mouse becomes more useful for aiming, which is the right click, and firing, which is the left click. Most of the sections played whilst inside a Cerebus involves the keyboard. The player uses W and S to charge the cannon with the amount of power that is desired in order for the steam ball to re reach its destination. If there have been any level specific drops picked up, the player can cycle through these using left and right arrow keys. However, some of them require positioning like walls. To do this in a dock, the player will use the up arrow to switch to the angle mode where they can freely move and angle the wall to the desired button or vent. The game also has controller support meaning that you can use an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. This is helpful as this game might take some time to get your head around, meaning you can relax while you're solving some puzzles. Steamroll is a game that's based underground, while you as a player are encased in a metal ball. The question is, how does this game get the sound design so right? Firstly, the soundtrack is one of the first things you'll hear while you're sitting on the main menu. The rich hearty clunks and bashes that combine with the almost eerie backdrop of cymbals and squeaks all come together to enhance the atmosphere of the game. However, the one problem with the soundtrack is that there isn't enough of it. Unfortunately, we only get two tracks. One of them that plays on loop in the menu screen and another one that loops while showing gameplay. For me, this went unnoticed until I had to stop playing to write notes on the game, but either way, it is a shame as you can tell that Antikato had a potential with the soundtrack from what we can hear. It has a certain feel as though you're, you are roaming around in these mines that just go on forever. The Cerebus has its own mobility sounds and it rolls along all the metal flooring or the rocky structures. Similarly, the fire mode has unique sounds for its wall deployment, bomb explosions and its ramp deployment. The only downside to these amazing metallic sounds is that they are also too on loop. As the Cerebus moves rather slowly, even when you're constantly using your steam, the noise of the dragon just loops and loops. As said, the Cerebus is slow, meaning you will have to listen to this for a good 20 seconds before you get to your destination. Unfortunately, this can lead some players to either take off their headphones or just mute the game entirely, which is definitely a shame. Moving on from this, there's a lack of any voice acting whatsoever. Throughout the game, we do not get one line of dialogue spoken to us by an actor. The story and dialogue is delivered to us through pop-ups and uh, subtitles that the player has to read. This then shuts off more potential as we have a story that is told partially to us through speakers and audio radios, meaning that Antikato are missing out on an opportunity to add little things like radio fizzles and cutoffs. Again, it's a shame because this would have made the Steamroll experience more immersive. With Steamroll, there isn't much to say about the graphics. When you do go into the options menu, there are four settings you can choose for your graphics. These all look fantastic no matter what setting, ranging from low to epic. 
Most of the game is set underground, which means that it lacks in distinct colour. The main colours that you see are blacks, browns and greys. However, there are points when yellow and red lights are used and it just ties up an area so well. I didn't expect to get as much fun out of this game as I did. With titles available on Steam like Portal and the Talus Principle, Steam Roll has definitely blasted its way into my top 10. It combines so many elements that it's hard to put into words. That is not going to stop me though, so here I go. Firstly, from the get go, you're thrown into the level select screen. Each level is presented with a small picture so that picking a certain level is made easier on the player. Then, next to the picture, there's a three star system. These stars represent the smaller challenges that you have within the level. These consist of how many resources you used in terms of steam balls and how many seconds it, it took you to complete the level. These smaller goals are so good for completionists or for players who strive for more than just the main story missions. They can give you something extra to work towards. Next, you're told to micromanage, a skill that you won't think you'll need until you actually start your mission. The steam is the smallest problem that you have, especially once you have to keep track of all of your different steam balls that you can use and how many you have. Working with the fact that you have limited resources comes with the simple fact that the levels and puzzles are good. You can actually tell that someone has sat down, thought of the puzzle and kept tweaking it until they find a solution that works. Personally I'd even go as far as to say that some of them do come up to par with the difficulty of those in Portal. A few levels even stumped me that hard that I had to take a break from the game and I couldn't solve it until I came back. Not only this, but the camera's perspective in the game matters. It's so inventive how the game encourages you to actually quite literally look at the game from a different perspective to find the answer. I was genuinely impressed when I discovered this and that's why I feel that this game is, can do so well. It just has so much potential along with DLC potential which I feel could be incredible. It is to say, sad to say that with the good points comes some bad ones too. Although the whole perspective let's make the player actually look idea is cool, the camera is put on a slider which means you can only go so far left and so far right. Not only this but it's on a track which is a set path that you cannot deviate from. This makes puzzles and levels feel restricted and slightly annoying when you only want to look slightly out of bounds to see if there's a solution that, that you can't see on the slider. Along with this, the steam balls that you fire all crumble into debris when they uh, expire after being shot. This is all well and good because it adds to the game's crumbling mind steam, but the debris has collision. Any small part that crumbles off your ball or explosive steam balls that causes walls to blow up will leave debris that the st smaller steam balls or even the Cerebus can interact with. Also, if any of that debris actually gets in the way of one of your steam ball paths, it will make the ball deviate. That's really annoying as if, if the debris does, does cause the steam ball to move, you have to revert back to the last checkpoint or start the whole level again. And this is the only major issue that I really had with Steamroll. Overall, I feel as though Steamroll is a brilliant game. Not particularly from a narrative standpoint, but more of a gameplay and puzzle standpoint. The way that the angles and the physics work so well with the steampunk setting just makes it feel so good when you solve a puzzle. The game has so much potential to work its way in amongst the greats of the puzzle genre world and Antikato have amazing potential here to boost their company through the works. Overall, I give this game a solid 8 out of 10 and would recommend this game to any one of my friends. Thanks for watching Keen Gamers, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our channel for more Let's Plays, reviews and weekly giveaways. Why not come visit us at our website at KeenGamer.com where you can find all the latest gaming news. Check out our Keen Gamer Facebook page and follow us on Twitter which is at KeenGamerCOM. Stay keen Keen Gamers.